should not perish but have everlasting life. Life says God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved. And the church said amen. And the church said amen one more time. Amen. We are so grateful to God that he's given us another opportunity that we can rise up early in the morning and come out to the house of the Lord and to worship and to worship him alone. For those of you that are viewing with us this morning on Facebook, social media, we are grateful to God for you this morning that you've gotten up early this morning to join in with us in this worship hour. Amen. We believe that the Lord has a word for us this morning. And I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for that word. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask if, uh, those of you that are here with us, if you stand with us as we go before the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you once again early in the morning to give you praise and to give you glory, to give you honor. Lord, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Father, we confess to you this morning that we've sinned and we've fallen short of your glory. Lord, we've done some things that were not pleasing unto you. Father, we've gone some places that we shouldn't have gone. We, 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 we thought things in our heart that was not pleasant to you, Father. And we ask this morning in the name of Jesus that you will forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness that we may be able to worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place this morning. We ask, Lord God, that you will move by your power this morning, Lord God. Speak to our hearts this morning, Lord God, as we open our ears and our hearts to hear from you this morning. Lord God, somebody this morning needs to be encouraged. Somebody this morning needs some strength for the journey that is ahead, God. And we know, God, is by your word and your word alone that we should be able to stand. And God, we thank you this morning. Thank you for every heart that is here this morning. God, we thank you for our pastor. We lift him up before you this morning. Oh God, as you prepare him, oh God, that he might declare your word to your people. Father, we pray for our praise and worship leaders. Anoint their voices, oh God, that they may be able to lead us in praise and worship, oh God. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise for us in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to the name of God. Yes. God Almighty. Yes. God who is everywhere. He sees and he knows our every need. Amen. 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 Psalms 34, 17 says, when the righteous call for help, the Lord will heal, hear, and deliver you out from your trouble. I'll say that again. When the righteous call for help, the Lord, that's the most important part of that yeah. scripture. Hey. You know, not your mother, not our father, not our spouses, uh -huh. but the Lord hears and delivers us out from our trouble. So this morning, we just want to encourage you that no matter what you're going through, and we're all going through a lot, okay? Some things we can see externally, some things we cannot. But no matter what we're going through, okay. Jesus will. Amen. Amen. And just cry unto him because, Amen. first of all, he hears your cry even before you cry. Amen. 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 So he already knows what you need. So just be encouraged today that no matter what it is, Jesus will because he cares about you. Amen. Oh, who opens doors? 
He'll fight your battles. He'll fight your battles. 
Yes, he'll fight your battles. He'll fight my battles, yes. He'll fight my battles, yes. He'll fight my battles. If I keep still. If I keep still. Yes, I know that he will. I know he will because he said he will. He said he will. Yes, Jesus will. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus will. Jesus will. Yes, he will. That's all we need. Those two words, yes. Jesus will. There's times yes. where we have to encourage ourselves. Amen. And when you need that encouragement, all you have to say is Jesus will. Jesus will. Jesus will. Just say that, Jesus will. Jesus will. And then say to yourself, for I know Jesus will. For
can say this morning that it is because of God's grace and mercy that I'm here this morning. I praise and glorify him for his blessings, for his power, for his strength that he gives unto us. Amen. 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 Such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning that he can dwell and he can bless us as he sees fit. All right. Yeah, we know that whatever God does, it is for our good. Amen? Amen. Our subject this morning, as we look at the book of Acts, our subject is when Christ Jesus come into my life. All right? My life. When Christ Jesus comes into my life. All right? Look, I... I 
I, I've, I've heard a song, and that song has been continuously in my heart. And it says, when Jesus came into my heart, all right? And I've been saying that even since, ever since Tuesday night when we're doing a study. We're going through a series of lessons on Paul. And in sharing on Paul, we come to the point where Paul had been a very bad boy. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was determined to destroy the saints. He was determined to kill the Christians, all right? He even went forth in his time period, all right, to ask the leaders if they would give him a letter that he could go into Damascus. And in Damascus, he wanted to get not just the men, but the women as well, those who could declare themselves to be Christians. He wanted to take them and bring them prisoners, and some they were actually stoning on their way. Well, it, 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 after Tuesday night Bible study, I, I just kept seeing this personal relationship that I saw Paul take into his conversion. All right? Amen. Paul was changed, if you would, from a bad boy into a servant of God. And so I made it personal for me when Christ Jesus came into my life because I am reminded, I am reminded of that very moment that he touched me. Somebody say he touched me. Amen. Notice the, the, the verses that we have in, in Acts chapter 9, 1 through 9 there, all right? We find this was, and Saul, yet breathing out, threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogue that if he found any of the, desire, the way, this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Soil, soil, why persecute thou me? All right, amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and doers. I will do the rest in the, as a part of the sermon up to verse 9. We can see then in this portion of Scripture, first of all, the previous life, amen, the previous life of Paul, amen, in that Acts chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, amen. He was, number one, against the disciples of the Lord, amen. We know that before, and you think about yourself and where you've been in your life, all right, before you are actually born again, before you actually accepted Christ, your life, amen, was a life of being an enemy. Somebody say enemy. An enemy unto the word of God, an enemy unto most of all the Messiah, the one that we believe is all Christ Jesus, all right? He, when we were out in the world, we were just as demonic at times as we can be because our personal life was a life of thinking on, only of self. Oh, we were selfish. You can admit it if you like to. If you don't, keep it to yourself. But I know that in my personal life, there was nothing that I wouldn't try anyway. Okay? Yeah. I know that many of my whoopings and many of my punishments, even as a young child, came not because somebody didn't like me, but because of my ugly ways, all right? I believe that that previous life is a life that you walk in your own wisdom. You walk in your own knowledge. You walk in your own way, all right? Look, 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 look. In this portion of Scripture, we see not only did Paul fight against the disciples, but 
he desired to go even further, all right? He wanted to branch out. From, he was in Jerusalem at the time, but he wanted to go in Damascus. Sometimes there are those times when we are allowed to get away with things in our lives. We think that we can continue to get away with things in our lives. We just continue to go forward in our own ways until God has to do something in our lives to get us straight. Anybody in here ever been ever been gotten straight by the Lord? Huh? Anybody in here ever realized that they needed the help of the Lord within their lives? Well, that's exactly what we see in the life of Paul. Paul desired that letter uh, that if he found anybody, all right, he didn't describe him in this portion of Scripture as any Christian. He says anybody, if he found any of this way, it's ironic that he would use that term to describe those Christians this way, all right, whether they be women or men, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Jesus said a word that reminds me in relationship to this way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And if there is any person in here that declares themselves to be a child of God, you must go this way, all right? This way means that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This way says that you believe that if you are going to get into heaven, you got to go this way. What is this way? Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one that died for our sins and trespasses. Oh, I'm grateful today that this way is applicable into my life because when I follow after Jesus, when I hear his word and I did not and allow his word to live within me, I know that I'm on the right track. Somebody say thank you, Lord, that when I'm able then to walk this way, which is the way of righteousness. This way is the way of dependency upon Jesus Christ. This way is the this way is allowing God to direct our paths in his righteousness. Not my will, but thy will be done. Not only is Christ declaring to be this way, but he declares also, he says, I am the truth as well. There are many lies out there being told, all right? There are many who have proclaimed themselves to be a child of God. There are many who have proclaimed themselves to be Jesus Christ, as a matter of fact. You've heard of David Koresh, haven't you? You've heard of Jim Jones, haven't you? They have declared a way but it's a way of the unrighteous, all right? It's a way that is walking in darkness instead of into that marvelous light. Oh, when Jesus then was able to be the way, the truth, and the light. The life means that you're no longer self, but you are allowing Christ Jesus to live within you. You are no longer on your own, but you have allowed Christ to take control of your life. I'm telling, telling you today that this truth is a truth that comes from nowhere but above. Oh, thank God this morning that he is the truth. He is the light of the world that taketh away the sins, amen, of this world. Thank you, Lord that I'm always able to recognize you as not being a lying person, but being the truth that only comes from up, up above, the truth that only God is able to bring within our life. If you desire to live forever with God, you must go this way by Jesus Christ. If you desire to have a life that lives more abundantly, you must go the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe that because of the love of Christ, 
because of his willingness to go the way of the cross, then we too must be willing to make that sacrifice in our life. I know that it was that sacrifice that God began to work in me and show me the direction that I was to go. He is, if you would, that power that lives within a person that have chosen to change from the old way into the new way. Thank God for that change that takes place within our lives. Notice that Paul in, the por in this portion of Scripture, as he approached Damascus, amen, the Bible says that as he journeyed there, uh, there was a sudden shine round about him. It wasn't another. It wasn't any, just any kind of uh, of situation that shined, all right. But it was something that came down from heaven, amen. Down upon his life. I tell you, this thing that came down from him was a light that was coming from God Almighty, all right. This was a bright light. Why a bright light? Because when we think of God, we think of his glory, all right? When we think of the glory of God, we think of a, a person or individual that has exaltation, all right? That is, he is admired by those who love him. He is honored by those who believe in him. That's the relationship that we have, that this light that shined as it shined upon Paul, it would impact your life. What a wonderful change that God is able to bring when, he, when you allow his light to shine down upon you. I thank God today that we can glorify him as being that heavenly light. Somebody once said, all good things come from above. Who lives above other than God Almighty? He's the above all the powers of this earth. He is above all the cosmos and all other things of nature in this world. I thank God for the light that shined in Paul's life because that same light is shining in my life to death. Thank God for his heavenly direction. Thank God that when Paul placed his trust in God, that God began to move within his life. I tell you that God is uh, that light. He's not just any light. He's a heavenly light. He's that ideal light. He's that beautiful light. What a beautiful, ominous change that he made within my life. So I can praise him for being that light. He's that awesome splendor that only comes from the glory of God. God is, I tell you, he tried that sits high and he looks low. God is, I tell you, the one that shows compassion upon each and every one of us. If we could just allow him to live within us, if we can allow him to be that light that shineth in the midst of darkness. I once was blind, but now I see. Isn't that a blessing? One day I was living in darkness, going to and forth and seeing what I could do for myself. But no longer when the light of God shined within my life. He came in, I tell you, and he set me on a road called straight. Hallelujah this morning. I'm grateful to God that he came when I needed him the most. One of my favorite words is, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shores, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the faith heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for lifting me out of the muck and the morrow. Thank you for setting me on a road called straight. And we realize that it's not always easy to make that change 
when God first speaks to you. That's why the word says, when you hear the word of God, harden not your heart. It's hard on the body of an individual who continues to fight against God when God is trying to show you the right direction. And so we see in Paul's life the confrontation against the Lord, all right? The confrontation. As he traveled that road to Damascus, as he was moving in, blowing smoke, it says threatening, amen, and trying to find who he could kill or take back into Jerusalem, the Bible says that he heard, he saw this light. And when he saw this light, he heard a voice. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for speaking to me. All right? Yeah, God speaks to us because of his love and compassion for us. And so it is that when this light hit Paul, he fell to the earth and heard this voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? I told the Bible study on Tuesday night, I told him, I said, now I remember when my mama would call me by name, Nate, and then everything was all right. But I remember when she called me by name more than once, and then I knew I was in trouble. Said, Nate, Nate, all right. I mean that I done done something or said something wrong. And so Paul's situation was one of urgency. God was ready to make a move in his life. God was ready to change from him, him from darkness into that same marvelous light. So he called on him. He didn't just call on him, but he declared to him the thing that he was doing was not right with God. He says, why persecute thou me? Now, notice if you would that he said, why persecute thou me? Well, if you look at it, Paul was persecuting the Christians. He wasn't looking for Jesus. He was looking for the Christians, you see. Yeah, he said, whether it's a woman or whether it's a man, whoever it is that's declaring Christ, I want to find them. But, the, but as a matter of fact, any time that there is someone fighting against, G, against Jesus Christ's word, he is fighting against Christ himself, all right? And so when Jesus then declared unto Paul, why persecute me, all right? It had a, a point in his life that he was willing then to understand exactly what this person, the Lord, was saying unto him. And he said, who art thou? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. He declares himself. He declares to Paul that, Paul, you are fighting against me. You are fighting against the one that saved the world from their sins and trespasses. Why fight against the prick, all right? The prick was a situation that in the Bible days, when an oxen would go along, you know, oxen can be pretty stubborn at times, all right? And so the, the individual, the owner of the oxen would use this stick, if you would, and he would take that stick, and when the oxen would go contrary, then he would use that stick to bring him back into the right position. Well, Jesus Christ used that illustration in order to tell Paul, Paul, you are headed down the wrong road. And I'm not talking about that Damascus road. I'm talking about that road that leads to salvation. You are headed down the wrong road. Have you anybody been there? You look at your life and you realize that you are not on the right road. You are going in the wrong direction. And it's time for you to make a turn and come around. Jesus then is saying unto Paul, Paul, you are fighting against the one that died on that old rugged cross. Paul, you are fighting against the one that gave his life that you could have eternal life. Don't fight against me, Paul, for you can't win, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Egypt fought against Moses and all of the Israelites, and they fought a losing battle. 
I tell you, we as Christians today, we as those who are hypocrites against God, all right, we are fighting a losing battle. We got to get right with God. We got to get right, and we got to do it right now. Don't allow no one else to turn you around. Don't allow no one else to make you fight against the Lord. One thing that we know that God is able to do for us, when the Holy Spirit comes, he leads and guides us into all truth, all right? And so we know, or we are warned to know when we are doing the wrong thing, all right? When we are wrong, then we need to recognize that God is warning us in order to bring us into that right relationship with him. So amen. It's hard to fight against the spirit of God. It's hard to confront God. Amen. You have to have a wicked and evil heart. But we believe that without Christ, we'll fail. Without Christ, we will do the wrong thing every time. We need the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Speak to my heart, Lord, that I will not sin against you. Speak to my mind, Lord, that I will not think evil things that goes contrary to your word. And so it is that when Jesus then shared the understanding to Paul that salvation is the process that Paul stepped into. Salvation begins with surrender. Somebody say surrender. The surrender in this, the surrendering in this case, amen, is to share that he trembled and astonishedly said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no man. I tell you, when you recognize that you've been on the wrong road, surrendering to Christ becomes our goal. Paul says, when you've done all you can do to stand, stand in righteousness. He says, I press toward the mark of a higher calling. Paul thought he was called to kill the saints and to hunt them out. But the calling upon his life was for his life and his life only. I tell you, you know, there were the men with him. They were journeying with him. They heard something, but they saw no one. All right? They heard something, but they didn't understand what was being said. When you surrender to Christ, when you allow him to live in you, God's calling is for you and for you only. Every one of us who are ch children of God, we have a calling on our lives. It says that Paul trembled, amen, that Paul was, was astonished for he saw he was able to see what Jesus Christ was saying and doing um, unto him. That light was not just a light of ele an element, but that light was the j glory of Jesus Christ that only he was able to see. And we believe then that Christ was challenging Paul and challenging his faith. Amen. When Paul submitted himself, Lord, what will thou have me to do? When you submit yourself, you are willing to do God's will. I'll go where he wants me to go. I'll do what he wants me to do. Allow me, Lord, to walk with you. Allow me, Lord, to do your will. No longer do I want to live in a world without you, Lord, but I want you to direct my path. I humble myself before you. I submit myself as needing somebody to direct my path. I need somebody who has control of all the powers of this world. I need somebody who can help me to turn from the wrong into the righteous way. Help me, Lord. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, that I will follow 
after thee. Notice this when Paul when Paul asked the Lord, what would you have me to do? Jesus said unto him, arise. That's a beautiful word to hear from the Lord, all right? Arise. Have you rose from your sins and trespasses? Have you taken a step that you desire to live for Jesus Christ? When he says, arise, we are able only by the power of God to rise up above our wickedness. We are able by the power of God to rise up to a level where God is able to direct our path. Rise up and declare the word of God. Rise up and glorify him for he is that power that comes from above. Rise up as Jesus is willing to use you in his service. Are you being used by Jesus? Have you determined that no longer do I desire to live a life that continues to pull me down, continues to tear me apart, continue to show me that I'm going in the wrong direction? When you arise, as Paul did, then you are headed in the right direction. Then notice this. He says, and, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. As Paul journeyed, amen, God challenged Christ, challenged him that he would not be told immediately what God wanted him to do. But he says, I want you to go exactly where you are going. Amen. And as you go into Damascus, I'll tell you what I want you to do. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't always have a, a direction from God at all times, but God chooses the time that he'll use us, that he'll take care of us, that he'll call us into his way. But sometimes he just needs to allow our faith to grow. Sometimes he just need for us to, to take time to pray and ask him for direction. He challenged Paul in the, in, in the right direction that he should go, and Paul accepted the challenge. Amen. The Bible says, And Saul rose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, all right? There was no one for him to see. Now, theologians say unto us that the reason that he didn't see no man because Jesus Christ was no longer that man that we used to see on earth. But Jesus Christ was the only, somebody say only, Jesus Christ was the only one that died on that cross of Christ. He is preeminent above all men. He stands alone by himself. I'm grateful today that he's the Messiah that set aside his royalties in heaven and came down to the earth. I'm glad today that when he came to the earth, he set the role model that we should follow after. I'm glad that he started a faith walk within me. For I'm able now to walk by faith and not by sight. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he directs me, I will go. Lead me, Lord, in the right direction. Help me, Lord, that I will follow after you. You are my Alpha and I'm Omega. You are my beginning and my end. Notice these closing words in that ninth verse. It says, and he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. There's a time for fasting and praying. All right? Yeah. We don't always see things as God would want us to do. All right? But we see in Paul that he obeyed God. All right? Yeah. He rose up. And he went forward. It says that he was blinded 
during this time, even in moving into Damascus, all right, that he couldn't see. Some says that he took God, Jesus allowed him to come forward, amen, blinded because he wanted to help him to understand his situation. He wanted him to pray about what was going on in his life. I tell you, when you don't know the way to turn, call on the name of the Lord. He's able to lead and guide you and direct your path. When it doesn't seem like you understand what God is doing within your life, take some time out and allow him to move within you. When you can't seem to find your way, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I tell you, God wants to direct your path. He wants to lead you in the right direction. Amen. But there are times that you need to be still. Sometimes we get caught up in this worldliness. Amen. Doing things that confuse us or cause us to go in the wrong direction. Oh, but if we would just pray and seek his face, call upon him and his righteousness, and he will in no wise cast us out. Are you ready today that are you are being obedient to the Lord? When you make that change in your life, it's time to allow him to lead and guide you into all truth. Let Jesus come into your heart. Let him direct your path. We believe that that is the way. If you are without salvation, if you've been living a life that does not glorify Christ, if the light of life is not shining within your heart and mind, this is a good time for you to make that change. God is willing, I tell you, if you would call upon him, he would in no wise catch you out. If you are willing to surrender to him, just as Paul did, he will come into your life. If you are willing to obey him, he will show you that direction that is above all else, that only he can guide you into the truth. Are you willing to receive him today? Are you willing to invite him into your life today? Invite him in. I open your heart. The doors, we open the doors of the church. In opening the doors of the church, we are saying that if you would open the doors of your heart and be willing to receive Christ Jesus, you can become a part of the church family that is always and willing and ready to walk in the newness of life. Come to Jesus. Invite him into your life. Have you repented of your sins and trespasses? Have you sacrificed the old nature that this new nature, being in Christ Jesus, this new man that can live within you, is willing to come into your life? If you would allow Christ in first, will you come? Is there another? Will you come? Is there another? Will you come? you come up? Uh, I've been from a job. My son got away from home. All right, all right, all right. In so doing, you were saying then that you are a Christian? Yes, sir. You've accepted Christ? I've been baptized in the name of the Son of Jesus. Okay, amen. Been baptized in the name? All right. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Brown Tone is saying that he has accepted Christ as his personal Savior in the past, and he's uh, 
Uh, he believes that Christ died for his sins and trespasses. And so he desires to unite together here with us as Macedonians. Let the church say amen. 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 We are so glad. Your words are words of Christian experience. You've already been through the process of salvation, of uh, baptized, confessing him as your Savior. And so it is that we can accept you here at Macedonia based on your Christian experience. We can say welcome, welcome, welcome to you. Amen. We are so grateful to have you to unite with us. That calling that you are describing is a calling of commitment. No one else can live that calling but you. Amen. And Christ will speak to you. He will lead and guide you as he desires for you. He can speak through the preached word of God. He can speak through the teaching that takes place in, in our Sunday school. Or he can speak to you through testimony of those who you believe that God is willing to direct. And so we say welcome, welcome here at Macedonia. All right? God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer. One day we look forward to the big hug and pat each other in the whole pool here. Amen. We, we, we want to assign to you to an award. Amen. You can claim Ferguson. He'll talk with you and give you more further information. Here, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. We thank God for each of you. We have a couple of announcements that we would like to mention to you. Our MCDC, Macedonian Community Development Cooperation, will be having their financial challenges tomorrow, financial challenges for tomorrow. That's a, a seminar, seminary seminar that will be conducted on Monday, September the 20th, amen, from 7 to 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, all right? And we'll go for five weeks for that purpose. We have special... Um, people that will be speaking to us. Cedric Lafour, Lafour, if you had been a part of Macedonia, you would re probably could remember him a number of years ago that he was a member here and he moved, amen, to another location. Well, he's one of the speakers. He's one of the instructors for that. And James Phillip is another one. So place that on your calendar. Please don't forget that our virtual worship service will... Uh, be going on that Saturday, September the 18th, amen, from 1045 to 12 noon here at Macedonia. Both of these are here at Macedonia, so we ask that you place them on your calendars as well. And don't forget, this coming Tuesday, amen, at 6 o'clock on Zoom, virtually, our youth will be having children, would you be in children Bible study. So parents, we are calling on you to, to set your children up for that time period, all right, that they can begin to worship. That's uh, on the third Sunday. That's next Sunday, if you will, all right? The well, third Sunday will also be our Sunday school day. Shine as a light in the world. Somebody say light. Yeah, Jesus Christ is that light that is shining. So we believe that this Sunday school day will be a time of glorifying God, a time of lifting him up that he may be able to touch hearts and mine as well. So place those on your calendars, if you would, as we go forward in the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. Please don't, please, please don't forget, everyone that comes in, we're wearing our masks. And we are safe distancing as well. We know that this pandemic is, is not uh, over with yet. It is continuing to fight against us, all right? But we believe that even in death, amen, we can have the victory because we are trusting and leaning and depending on the Lord himself. Amen? Say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. We glorify God for his blessing. Stand with us as we thank God for our offering. Oh, yeah. We want to mention to you that our very own sister Rosa Tillman has gone home to be with the Lord. 
Amen. And so we are preparing for her home going services. Amen. Up to this point, it looks like it's going to be the 18th, but we'll give you more direction on that. The 2nd, the 2nd second of September, okay? So of October, 2nd of October. Thank you so very much, all right? Yeah, place that on your calendars as well. So we'll give you further information on Sister Tillman. All right, God bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of being able to serve you, Lord. We glorify you and praise you and serve you in the giving of our tithing and offering unto you. Bless this tithing and offering that it may be used to your glorification, to the upbuilding of your kingdom. Thank you for each and every heart, Lord, that continues to give to, toward your kingdom work. In these and many blessings, we thank you for. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. May we receive the closing benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you here.